Hi, and welcome to a special edition of Checkmate's Tech Talk. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Nitsan. Tell me about your recent publication. Okay, what we discovered is a vulnerability in LG devices, where LG devices comprise of up to 20% of Android market in some countries. Uh, this vulnerability allows us to inject and run malicious code remotely on the devices, uh, which allow us to basically steal your information, your photos, your emails, uh, your passport, passwords, your banking passwords, or even uh, record you in unknown and unwanted times. Sounds very interesting. But what is so unique about this publication? So what's unique about this publication is that the Android ecosystem is considered secured in our days and most part of the OS has the built-in security mechanism and it's not that common to find a built-in system application which have such remote code execution vulnerability. So how can this vulnerability be exploited? Okay, so what's unique about this vulnerability is that it's not a standard code vulnerability like Stack Overflow or Buffer Overflow, but rather a logical vulnerability in the update mechanism of the built-in LG keyboard. Um, and it's not a single point of failure in the keyboard, but rather a series of programming malpractices that leads to this exploitation. It starts way with insecure communication where the update process happens over HTTP and not HTTPS. That allows an attacker that somehow gains a man in the middle uh, on the device via insecure Wi-Fi or in other matters uh, to to transfer files in the update process and inject the code. But it's, it doesn't end there. Uh, in order to exploit this vulnerability, you also have, um, you also have directory traversal within the LG keyboard, which, which allows you to overwrite files and not only uh, download new languages to the update folder, and the third part is the dynamic code execution of the keyboard, which allows you to run, uh, to run, to download the device and run code without any signing or verification of that code. Uh, so all those pieces combined allows you to inject malicious code, which will run persistently on the device. Very interesting. Can you show us some more? Sure. Hi, this is Jonathan, and we're now about to dive in into the technology part of the LG vulnerability. Uh, and later on at the end, we're going to see a demo of the attack. So a recap of the vulnerability. We're talking about a vulnerability uh, resides in LG in LG phones, specifically in LG keyboards. It happens during the update process of handwriting languages, update or installation of handwriting languages. Handwriting languages are languages where you can write with your finger and it transfers your writing into text. Um, it is a remote code execution vulnerability, an RCE, which means it lets an attacker to run its own code payload on the device and it's been tested and proven on LG flagship devices including LG4, LG5 and LG6 and was also seen to work on various Android versions from Android 4.4 to Android 8. So how does the vulnerability happen? So the vulnerability itself uh, is listed as one vulnerability but is actually a series of smaller vulnerabilities or code mal practices if you like. Um, the first one is using uh, insecure communication. So the download slash uh, update process of the keyboard 
happens over HTTP instead of HTTPS. That enables an attacker to interfere with the communication, change or replace files as he will. Uh, the second is the lack of path traversal verification, which means uh, when files are downloaded, an attacker can change the location of those files, write them to uh, various paths and uh, directories which were not meant to be written to. And the third is the dynamic code execution. So basically we know that dynamic code is execution, meaning a code that is downloaded from a server and then run on a device or a computer is a dangerous process. Uh, specifically in uh, Android, all applications are signed uh, with their code by the developer where a certificate can be verified. However, in this case, this extra code is downloaded from a server without any, any verification after the application is already installed and running on the device. Uh, and this itself contains several steps. Uh, each one is lacking uh, a specific aspect of security. So if the first is that any file that is downloaded is granted uh, execution permission only based on its suffix. So a .so file would, will get execution permission. The second is that a configuration, which is also downloaded and can be run over, uh, controls which code files will be run later on during the app execution. And the third is the lack of signing verification of the code uh, component itself, as we just mentioned. So, how does the downloading process happen? The first file that is being downloaded once a language pack is, down, is uh, updated or installed is the files.txt. It is basically uh, a text file with a list of all the proceeding files to be downloaded for that language pack. As you can see here in the example, it contains three files, and while each individual file you can see is signed, you can add or remove records from this file txt and the file txt itself is not signed or verified in any way and it transfer over HTTP. Uh, so what can we do? If we have a man in the middle proxy on the device, for instance, if he's connected through our uh, hotspot, through our malicious hotspot, we can change or modify the files txt. So, uh, what the attacker can do is, is add an additional record, as you can see here, uh, a fourth record, which contains the attack so file. So here we're saying to the uh, keyboard application to download this additional file for this language. But this file will not be saved in the language directory. Since we're using the directory traversal, we go back in the directories and tell it to save the attack so into a different, not intended directory. This is not mandatory for the attack so file, but it does allow us to save it in such a place where if the, this specific application pack will be updated or uh, uninstalled, the file will still remain on the device. The second part is to take care of the loading process. So once we get the SO, the native malicious code to the device, we need to make sure someone runs it. This can be done by overriding the engine properties file, which is the configuration files of the, uh, of the application. It is not part of the language pack, but since we have directory traversal, as you can see, we can add an additional record to the files txt, telling it to override the engine properties. And this is really where the directory traversal shines. So once we uh, updated these two files, uh, we can uh, execute the attack. Uh, so as we mentioned, one of the problems is that the application assumes that the SO should 
is a code and should run, so it grants it automatic execution permissions. And the second is the engine properties that is run over by the directory traversal. And as you can see, we add this particular line to the engine properties, telling it to load the attack SO file on restart. Um, so after the keyboard, the LG keyboard restarts, or all the devices rebooted, the application will reload and then it will look into the engine properties and load our attack SO file and run it. What it enables us? Well, it enables the attacker uh, a set of capabilities since the keyboard is, comes with the device ROM and it's a system uh, application. It allows basically system privileges to the attacker code. So first and foremost, it allows it to get all the keyboard, uh, um, all the keyboard input. So whatever you write, everything you write on the device, including your passport, your users, can be recorded. It allows you to silently install additional applications as you wish, monitor the device location, recording, get uh, files from the device like your sensitive pictures, uh, and basically a lot of permissions that can be used maliciously. So to recap, uh, what we discovered is a vulnerability in LG devices, specifically in the LG built-in system application keyboard. Uh, the vulnerability itself is a series of programming malpractices that allows us to exploit it uh, uh, in a fairly straightforward way. And what it allows is allows the attacker to gain system privileges and execute malicious code in, with system permissions. Showing a quick demo, uh, what we see here is on the right, we see a screencast of the device, which is connected to a malicious hotspot uh, started on this PC. So once this hotspot is, uh, starts, all the device traffic goes through this computer. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going, to, we're going to the keyboard setting and we're gonna initiate a download of a new handwriting languages. So now going into the, to the LG keyboard and downloading uh, a new language pack. Okay, so as you can see, we've initiated the download. What you can see on the computer is the files that the device is being downloading. So you can see that the first file is files.txt that is being downloaded, and following it is two files, the SO file. The name is a bit different, but this is our malicious SO, and the engine properties files, which is the... Uh, which is the configuration file. Now all there's left to do is restart the device. We're gonna restart the LG keyboard app instead because it's faster. So we're going to the apps, we're going to the LG keyboard and we're gonna restart it. And once uh, it restarts, it will load our malicious code and you can see that the device has been hacked. So all this malicious code is doing is just showing you a pop-up that uh, it, ha it has run. Okay, first stopping the LG keyboard and now opening the search bar which will automatically uh, restart the keyboard and the malicious code executes. That's it and thank you for watching.